from the Maya Vitoris sequence we considered last time, we will today derive an important isomorphism in homology, which is called the suspension isomorphism. And to explain what that is, let me first of all fix the topological space. My pen doesn't write. Let's take the other one. So let X be a topological space. And then I will remind you about two notions. I don't know if it's a reminder or if we did it before, but I'll write it down in any case. So first of all, the cone of the space X. Oops. That is the quotient space called Cx and it's defined by you take x and the product with the unit interval and you just mod out the copy of x at the top. So the copy x times 1 here. And the second space is the suspension. on black pencil. The suspension of X is the space, let's call it S as in suspension. And well, it's just you take the cone and you also collapse the other copy of X at the bottom of the cylinder. So you take now the cone mod out X times zero. And the terminology should be pretty clear. Yeah, let's say the space X is a circle. In this case, the cone would look like this. Yeah, so it's a cylinder where you collapse the top um, copy of X. So in other words, you will get this cone-shaped space here. And the suspension in turn now occurs if I also collapse the lower copy here. So then a way to picture this would be something like this, sort of like a double cone if you want. Yeah, and let's also try to draw it 3D, something like this. Yeah, so it, this would be the cone and this would be the sus suspension for X being equal to the circle. Okay, so why is this construction interesting? Well, first of all, we have a easy to remember formula Namely, if you take the suspension of the n minus 1 sphere, what you will get is just the n sphere. Yeah. So that's really easy to remember. Of course, this s is for sphere, and this s is for suspension, but that's a lucky coincidence. Yeah. So if you multiply s to the n minus 1 by another s, you get s to the n. <laughs> so this is how you can remember this, but why is it true? Well. By definition, the suspension of the n minus 1 sphere, that is the cone of the n minus 1 sphere, divided by the n minus 1 sphere times 0. But now, if I take the cone on the n minus 1 sphere, you can just think of the tip of this cone as lying in the center of that sphere. And as such, you see that every um, point of the sphere is joined to the center point. So in other words, what you will get is it's just the n disk. So the cone of the n minus 1 sphere is really completely canonically or can com completely canonically be identified with the n disk. And now you mod out from the n disk its boundary as n minus 1. And that is homeomorphic to the n sphere, but I think it's important that one fixes once and for all such a homeomorphism so that there is no um, doubt left as to how to identify those two spaces. And let's call this homeomorphism un. And I think it already occurred at some point last semester, but nevertheless, let me uh, describe you this homeomorphism concretely. So let me give you the exact formula for it. So what does it do? You take now an element from the end disk and we describe it sort of uh, in radial coordinates. So we take x1, excuse me, x1 
until xn. And in front we write a number t, which is just, just supposed to be an element of the unit interval. So that sort of this x1 until xn, that's some point on the boundary of this disk on the S, Sn minus one, and the t sort of declares how far you are away from the midpoint of that, um, of that um, disk, yeah? So, yeah, so you get x1 to xn, that's the point in the boundary, and t tells you the radial coordinate. And you map this to u, I'll explain to you in a minute what's u, u x1 until u times xn, 2t minus one, where, like I said, t is from the unit interval. And now u is the square root of one minus two t minus one square, like this. Okay, and if you think about this, what does this formula tell you? It tells you that if you have the two disk, yeah, then you wrap it round the sphere, round the two sphere in this case, so we visualize it for n equals two, uh, such that the midpoint of your two disk maps to the south pole of your sphere, and then if it was made of some rubber material, you just bend this disk over such that it um, winds around the sphere, and such that then the boundary, which is a circle, collapses at the north pole. Yeah, I hope you can visualize this. I'm afraid of drawing the picture, yeah, but you take the disk <laughs> made of from a rubber material, you map the midpoint to the south pole, and then you wrap it from below to the top around the sphere. Right, such that the boundary becomes the North Pole. And this is what this formula um, describes. Okay, so if we suspend the N sphere, we obtain the N plus one sphere. And one more remark. So clearly both, both those constructions, the cone and the suspension, um, are of course functors from the category of topological spaces to the category of topological spaces. Yeah, so what does it do on morphisms? Well, if you have a continuous map between X and Y, say, then the map from the cone of X to the cone of Y, this is just the original map F at every altitude. Yeah, you take sort of the space times the unit interval, and no matter where you are in the um, unit interval coordinate, you just use the map F to, to, to uh, map the point over. And the same applies to um, the suspension, yeah? So just the quotient map. Okay, so that should be clear. And now I can formulate the theorem I was advertising and um, um, formulate the suspension isomorphism. So in case our topological space is not empty, this we should now assume, we have a natural isomorphism. And the word natural is why I insisted that cone and suspension are functors, so that this makes sense. We have a natural isomorphism from the reduced n plus first homology of the suspension of a space to the reduced nth homology of the original space. And this holds in all degrees yeah, for all n in z. OK, so note the degree shift here. Yeah? So this is usually isomorphisms in homology are at this or happen in the same degree, but this is the difference, yeah? So here it's from the n plus first to the nth degree. The proof is now easy because we already have the long exact sequence, um, collapse sequence for closed neighborhood deformation retracts, and this is precisely what we will use now. This is also the assumption that the x space x is non-empty. So we have a long exact sequence Um, for reduced homology, which works like this. So let me start in n plus first degree to get it right. n plus first reduced homology of the space um, X. Then comes the n plus first homology of reduced homology of the cone. And then comes the n plus first homology of the quotient space, and the 
the quotient, Cx mod x, this is precisely what the suspension is. So this goes here. And then comes the boundary homomorphism to the reduced enthromology of x, and again the end reduced homology of the cone. And this is all we need because the cone now has the property that the space x deformation retracts onto the cone tip. Yeah, that's the point of the cone construction. Yeah, every space embeds into a contractible one by this cone construction. And therefore, this by homotopy invariance, this reduced homology of the cone is just the same thing as the reduced homology of the point. And this was the good thing about reduced homology. Reduced homology of a point is zero in all games. So this is just zero. And this is also just zero. And therefore, this morphism is zero. And therefore, this morphism is zero. And therefore, the boundary homomorphism here is um, an isomorphism. And this is precisely the suspension isomorphism. So it comes from the boundary homomorphism in this 